Hello and a very warm welcome. You've joined us live from Queensway in the great city of London, England. Today it's week 12 of the Simulation Football League regular season. And with only two games left, the Baltimore Vultures have all but locked in their place in the playoffs. Meanwhile, the hometown London Knights already eliminated from the playoffs, but can still play spoiler tonight as they look to end their season in style. Good evening, I'm your play-by-play -play commentator, Michael Trillo. Alongside me in the booth is a man who I am not sure still has a voice, Eric Vinson. Oh, I'm still here, Michael. I'm feeling good, man. I'm ready for more SFL action. Had to catch a quick uh, plane ride over here to across the pond. And uh, this should be a great matchup here. More playoff caliber teams. And uh, Baltimore definitely fully entrenched in the playoff fight. Baltimore will receive the opening kickoff. The kicker, Nate Odell, has the ball on the tee. His hand is in the air, and it's game on here from Queensway in London, just past 1 a.m. local time. But the fans have still shown up big as Kaz McFly returns that ball up to the 27-yard line, and the Baltimore offense takes the field, and here they are. The quarterback is Mike Dazzo. The running back is T. Roy Gaines. The wide receivers are Garen Malone, Daly Holder, and Shea Carroll. The aforementioned Mike Dazzo under center on first down for their own 27-yard line going right to left across your radio dial in the first quarter. He's going to feel some pressure but get the pass away to the near side. A spinning move by Darren Malone takes him past the first down marker and all the way out to the 42. And an impressive first down play there by Dazzo throwing it out to his main wide receiver Garen Malone impressive spin move there able to bounce off the tackler getting first down yardage and that's a great first play uh, to start things off for this vulture offense may the defender Cody Anderson look silly on that play Dazzo in the eye formation on first to ten changes the play at the line And he will wait and hand the ball to T. Roy Gaines, who almost is bottled up in the backfield, is able to fight back to the line of scrimmage. Jimmy Rigg brought him down. And T. Roy Gaines, a very dangerous back. He can definitely come out of the backfield in multiple ways in both the passing game and the running game. So definitely want to be aware of him as he comes onto the field for the second down. Nine touchdowns on the season for Gaines. He's going to get the ball again. And he's going to pummel through for close to first down yard. He's going to get out to midfield. Third down and a manageable three coming up. Let's run you through the London defense. The safeties are Nathan Blake and Jeff Belinishin. Linebacker Slyn Shady and the beefy defensive line with William Davidson, Tyrone Zeus, Frank Axamal, and Matt Patton. As we set up for third down and three right at the midfield stripe, the crowd gets loud here at Queensways. Baltimore looking for another first down, short drop, throws into the soft zone coverage and a first down for Baltimore into plus territory at the 41 yard line. First catch of the day for Daly Holder. And Daly Holder coming over from the uh, former San Antonio Vaqueros was the number one wide out for them coming over and playing the slot receiver for this talented Baltimore team. Uh, so it definitely shows the grit and grid that he has uh, coming over to this team. Dazzo in the gun, empty backfield, five wide as he throws, floats it out there and it's incomplete. Kind of split the middle between Holder and Malone. And that's a good push and that's a, a very good example of what this London D-line can do. They get after the quarterback fast and don't allow you much time in the pocket. Well, this Baltimore team prone to turnovers as well, Michael. Sorry to cut you off there. Dazzo under center, second and 10. He looked to throw, pressure in his face. Got the ball out to the far side. That pass is complete as Shea Carroll picks up his first catch of the evening. And Shea Carroll able to keep the tippy-toes in bounds. 
Nice catch out to the 37, coming into enemy territory. Good first drive here by the Vultures and that veteran quarterback, Dazzo. Uh, Mike Dazzo, his sixth season, formerly the Baltimore Crabs. He took a season off when the Crabs did, and he throws down the middle of diving crab inside the red zone of the 16. Shea Carroll, back-to-back -back catches, and that one was spectacular. Super impressive throw and catch here. Dazzo throwing it only where his receiver can get it and a nice stretching grab by Holder and, uh, excuse me, Shea Carroll as they find themselves in the red zone now. Into the SFL presented by APM Music Red Zone for the first time this evening. Dazzo split backs behind him at a receiver each side. He'll hand it off to Gaines. Gaines powers through one tackle and gets to the five. Put it on the board. T. Roy Gaines on its impressive display of explosive speed and Baltimore is first on the board and that's his eighth rushing touchdown on the year as we get another look here T-Roy very good at just following his blockers slips the one tackler that had any chance to bring him down wasn't even touched on his way to the end zone after that the Vultures take the early lead Quick early chat shout out to the Jack Gamer, TMG Jr., the Trash Car, Mahmoud Ajalati, Gerald Smith, Thomas Paternity, and everybody else watching us on the SFL Network on YouTube. Thank you for spending your Sunday evening with us here at the SFL. The kicker for Baltimore is Shark Tarkington, and he puts the extra point up and through, and so with 8-10 to go in the first, it's Baltimore 7, London nothing. This is the SFL presented by APM Music on YouTube. Stay with us. Big early statement drive by Baltimore. As Tarkington gets ready to kick it off again to the London offense. But first, the return from the 5 up to the 10, 15, 20, and... Run down at the 25-yard line. The return man today is Jeff Malinishin. Here is the London offense. The quarterback is Nathan Lee. The fullback is Rex Ripley. Wide receivers are Donnie Hands and James Hands. And the tight end is Tristan Carr. They'll start from their own 25-yard line. Going left to right, silver helmets, red jerseys, silver pants with yellow trim and white numbers. Handoff up the middle, and on first down, Rex Ripley gets four yards. And you gotta watch out for this fullback coming out here, Rex Ripley. He was a, a late season ad here, uh, releasing kicker Austin Powers and picking this guy up, and boy, has it helped add an additional dimension to this offense for Nathan Lee and company, as we see right there on first down. Split backs behind Lee, who's under setter. The hands put his split to each side. Another handoff to Ripley, and Ripley got knocked down unceremoniously. That was 56. Amon takes for Baltimore. With that, let's get to the rest of the Baltimore defense. The safeties are Giovanni Bolt and Tony Willis. Cornerbacks, Kaz McFly and Hendricks Wild Thornberry. The linebackers are Joe Dazzo and Amon Takes, who just made that last tackle. Third down and four. Lee going to go to the air for the first time. He's going to fire near side. Tipped it incomplete. And that one was batted down by Thornberry. And it'll be a three and out for London on their first drive. Two talented corners here in Baltimore. They call him the no McFly zone on the opposite side. Kaz McFly and Wild Thornberry there showing his grit. Knocking that ball to the turf. It's a good play there by the uh, secondary for the Vultures. The two corners, McFly and Thornberry, have combined for eight interceptions all the season. Four apiece as the punter for London is Paul Hunter. He'll get it away from the 20-yard line. Fair catch called for by McFly at the 35, and that is where Baltimore will play their second drive. Impressive London start to the ball in. game here for Baltimore here, Michael. I'm sorry. Yeah, but London comes into this game as a big underdog, 3-7, and seven, out of the playoff race. What do they have to do tonight to get a win here against the Baltimore team that looks like they might be 
aiming for a deep playoff run this season. And we'll get to Eric Stott after this first and 10 for the Baltimore 36. Gazzo. Ball was tipped as it came out of his hands. And a good tackle by Tyrone Zeus. Well, and Michael, we haven't quite gotten to the defense here for London, but this defensive front is all stars, all star power for this defensive front. William Davidson, Frank's, Frank Axmall, Matt Patton, and Tyrone Zeus, all star players for this defense. So I think defense is going to control the tempo of this game, and they need to step it up here after that early score. Second and 10. Dazzo under center. He's going to hand it off to Gaines, and Gaines finds nowhere to run. He'll pick up three. And he was engulfed by Michael Wall, or uh, Schlin Shady, rather, at the linebacker, and Kyron Zeus. And again, controlling the run game, T-Roy is going to have a hard time getting through some holes today against that defensive line for London. Four wide plus a tight end on third and seven. Dazzo alone in the backfield. He's going to float it out over the middle. First down and more into plus territory. Edward Morgan, the tight end. He may not have a star contract, but he makes star plays all over the field, and he's been doing it all season. Well, and Michael, this works well for the Baltimore offense. They have several threats going through the air, not necessarily T-Roy Gaines, but these three wideouts that they brought in, they can definitely dish it out and throw it around, especially with this veteran quarterback, Dazzo. So watch out here for London. They don't have any star corners to combat the, these wide receivers. That's what makes defending Baltimore uh, offensively so hard as T-Roy Gaines can just do it all himself as he picks up 10 yards in a first down. Oh boy, I, I just got back from uh, doing this Alaska game and I was watching uh, Robert Redford from Vegas and boy, I, I thought I was watching Robert Redford still just throwing stiff arms, bodies flying to the turf. Just unbelievable play there by T-Roy to get a first down. First and 10 at the London 35. This drive started at the Baltimore 35. So they've already flipped the field here on their second drive. 5.24 to go. Another handoff to Gaines, and he's flattened. The linesman gave him a yard, but that's probably generous as Davidson laid the hit. And this is what I'm talking about, this defensive line. They are very aware of T. Roy's talents, and they are going to try and stop him as often as possible. Good play there by the defensive line, holding him to a minimal gain. Second and nine, they're going to go empty backfield. Two receivers each side for Baltimore. Dazzo back to pass. Pressure coming, he gets the pass away. Near sideline, caught Darren Malone inside the 10 on the mark down at the 11-yard line. He almost turned it up field that he would have been gone, but he couldn't carry the momentum. Well, and this is the trick. Like I said, Baltimore having all this star power, a wide receiver, and no star power over at corner on the other side for London. So that's going to be a lot of mismatches today. We saw one there, Gary Malone making the big play almost into uh, the first and goal territory here. Offset eye, first and 10 from inside the red zone at the 11-yard line. And my own coach, T-Roy Gates, untouched. Put it on the board. He's got two touchdowns in the first quarter. Jeez, then again, I, I might be wrong. I mean, uh, T-Roy already with two touchdowns on the board. A lot of damage through the air. But, man, just look at the blocking up front. Very impressive by this Baltimore offensive line and uh, throwing in another block for the uh, tight end I think it was a tight end there that got into the second level and just cleared the way for T-Roy to just waltz on into the end zone impressive start from this vulture offense that was Chad Morgan the fullback an impressive block at sprung gains but he was untouched into the end zone and for a defense that prides itself on stopping the run it's not looking too hot here in the first quarter <laughs> Extra point up and through from Tarkington. It's 14 to nothing. Baltimore has raced out to an early lead. 4.36 to go in the first. Just let me know when we're back to live. All right, we should be good now. All right. 
Apologies for the technical difficulties. It's second down and 10 for the London 25. Lee looking, throwing. That's a seam route in the first down. First of the game for the London Knights out to the 40. Donnie Hands gets the first reception for London of the game. And again, we were just talking about the Hands boys here. Good catch just coming off the slant route. Looks like zone coverage being run by the Baltimore Vultures there on defense. Uh, so certainly a great opportunity uh, for a slant route to be run. So a good call there on offense by the Knights. The offense already down 14-0. Lee and company already going to have to play with some urgency here. Just under four minutes to go. Full back handoff and Ripley got nothing off the edge. Yeah, and Ripley definitely needs to be involved more often with this offense, but uh, it, there's nothing you can do when the defense just gobbles you up in the backfield like that, Michael. Albert Butler was in on the tackle. And now second and ten. Hand off this time again to Ripley, and again he stuffed up the middle. And he's only going to get two yards this time. As Shins, as uh, sorry, this time it's Michael Wall comes up and makes the tackle. And Wall is a big dude there on the defensive line as well. Six four three eighteen, a fitting name for the man. Third down and eight. Lee, quick strike over the middle, caught by hands, but he's not going to get close enough to the first down marker. He needed to get past midfield. And he didn't get it. So London going to have to punt again. As Paul Hunter getting a little more work in the first quarter than he would have thought coming into the game. Or they send the offense back out on the field. Might just try to get him to jump off sides here, Michael. We'll have to see as the play clock approaching 10 seconds. Lee looks over the defense and it doesn't look like he's going to snap it. And I don't think the Baltimore defense thinks he's going to snap it either. London Burns, a timeout. And I'm not a huge fan of this strategy. Uh, it, it's very popular amongst uh, the SFL nation. Uh, I, I'm not a, a huge fan of it. Uh, I'd say burn or uh, save your timeouts for a uh, more valuable use as uh, Nathan Lee getting an earful on the sideline there. But, uh, you know, sometimes it does work out. We have seen uh, those free plays happen and uh, teams making the defense pay for it. I think in – I've been now cast – this is my third season, coming to the end of my third season in the SFL. I've seen it work, like, twice. And that's, for me, not a high enough completion rate for to warrant going for it at least once a game. It seems like it does happen. As the punt is away from Hunter and it fly, takes him inside the 20, spins away from one tackle and gets up to the 26 yard line eventually, pushed down. And Kaz McFly was uh, looking like Marty McFly out there with uh, some of those moves, man. That was uh, that was very impressive on that punt return. Too bad he couldn't get any any extra yardage, but uh, certainly a good uh, good start there for the Vultures offense. I think after his career in football, he's got a career on the dance floor. He's spun so much. First and 10 for Baltimore from their own 26, looking to go up three scores in the first quarter as Keyword gains. Fights for two yards up the middle. As we get a look at the numbers there, certainly a big discrepancy between the two rushing attacks for these ball clubs. Uh, very right. impressive showing for T. Roy so far here as he's got 51 yards and two touchdowns already. But at the same time, Rex Ripley is a fullback. He's not going to get you that breakaway speed. He's a short yardage, get a few yards back. And he's been doing that so far tonight, but he hasn't been put in the situation where he is best utilized. Very true. And, and we have definitely talked about that and uh, how London probably needs to start using him more towards uh, the, the end of a halfback uh, where he gets, you know, 15, maybe 20 touches a ball game. Third down and five for Baltimore. Dazzo, quick fire over the middle, and he threw it low. And it's incomplete. It was off the foot of Daly Holder, incomplete. And, and this is the first stalled drive for Baltimore. I was about to say, Michael, a very rare misfire there by Dazzo. 
as uh, he has been lights out today when uh, he hasn't been handing it off to T-Roy. As we get a look at that Baltimore sideline, uh, everyone's all ready to go. And uh, as I've talked to uh, old TJ himself, the owner of the uh, Baltimore Vultures, they have not missed the playoffs with the Dazzos on the squad. Kick away, first punt of the game for Tomler Gates as he pins London at their own 36 and Nathan Lee will have to uh, try and do a little bit better and it's only the first quarter but it already seems like there's some heads down on the London sideline like they can't unlock this Baltimore offense. They're going to try to here on first and 10 from their own 36. A minute five to go in the first quarter. I formation. Lee throws near side, complete to Donnie Hands. He's the only London Knight with perception so far. He'll get eight yards. Well, and Donnie making a good move on that play, not really catching the ball far from the line of scrimmage, but per turning on the Jets and showing the moves. Able to get something out of nothing. Eight yards is certainly a good gain on first down. Interesting that Donnie is the only one with receptions so far because his brother James is the feature receiver. He's got three times as many touchdowns and yards all the season as Donnie has. Here's Lee, second and two, over the middle. That pass is complete. Oh, no, it's not. It's broken up by Willis. Oh, man, I thought for sure he had completed that, Michael. I, I thought it was, too. The pass was intended for the tight end, Tristan Carr, over the middle. Looked for all the world like he'd hauled that in, but the ball hit the turf. We're not going to get a replay of it. And now Nathan Lee, a third and two. This might be Ripley area. But Lee's going to throw. He's going to loft it over the middle. A diving attempt is incomplete. As the pass was knocked away by Giovanni Bolt. And another three and out for the Knights. Well, and they were looking towards Ripley, Ripley on that play, excuse me, as he tried to make that diving attempt. But Nathan Lee didn't see the out route wide open towards the bottom of our, or excuse me, towards the top of the screen there. I'm not sure why he didn't just throw that out route, get the first down, and keep the sticks rolling. Whatever the reason, it doesn't matter. Well, London comes up empty again. This crowd, which was very loud for such a late night here in London, is quieted down a lot. Now, you know, we're out here in London. It's almost 2 a.m., and this game is already, has already just started. We're still in the first quarter, Eric. You know, how much of a toll does that take on the players and the fans as well? Oh, absolutely it does. Uh, you know, we're starting to get some good crowd noise here uh, following that, uh, that return, but it certainly affects the players and the fans as t gets another huge gain here. Nine yards through heavy traffic, and that is the T-Roy gains we all know and love. Another big run. And <laughs> he ran right through Slim Shady. Which is impressive. That, that's that's difficult to do right there. We have reached the end of this evening's first quarter. Baltimore 14, London. Yet to get it going on offense. This is the SFL presented by APM Music on YouTube. Stay with us. Michael Trurillo, Eric Vinson in the booth from Queensway in London in a week 12 matchup between the Vultures and the Knights. Second down and one, handoff, Gage with some running room, puts his head down, lowers the shoulder, runs over a man, and gets a first down. He ran right over Jamie McDonald and picked up the first down. And that's some of the stuff that T-Roy can do. He can come out of the backfield and lower his shoulder like a big pounding, bruising, you know, Jerome Bettis type of back. He can also be shifty coming out of the backfield, catching passes, being almost an Alvin Kamara type of back. So we'll have to kind of see what they use here in Baltimore. Oh, there's T-Roy Gaines again. He's gone down the sideline. He breaks another tackle and gets deep into London territory all the way to the 38-yard line. 
And again, very impressive here. Very patient, following blockers, lowering the shoulder and just <laughs> absolutely making a defensive back look silly. It, it, it didn't even take it until he got out of bounds before he got dragged down. Just a, an impressive run here by T-Roy Gaines. You know, that was Jamie McDonald that he leveled for the second play in a row. I wouldn't be surprised if McDonald's over on the sideline right now. I Got to get some smelling salts. Handoff. Gaines running right again. This time he'll run into the teeth of the defense. Jeff Malinishin came up from the safety spot to bring him down. He'll only pick up three. Well, and you can only run it so many times before they start to make adjustments, see what you're doing, and put an end to it. And that's pretty much what they saw right there. Still got a good gain of three out of it on first down, though. Now an empty backfield, five wide. Dazzo throws underneath and it's dropped. Edward Morgan heaped praise on him in the first quarter for making a great catch and getting about 15 yards, but that time he just straight up dropped it at about five yards of space. Well, you know, and there are some guys that are like that. They thrive under pressure. So, uh, you know, those little uh, dink and dunk catches, uh, not really as focused on those as uh, as much as the, the big-time playmaking type of catches. Well, we're going to get a four wide plus a tight end on third and seven. Dazzo throwing far side. That's complete to Garen Malone, but Malone's momentum took him out of bounds. They're not going to get close to the first down. Came up short by about three yards. And that's just a poor job by the wide receiver. Uh, he should be going up to the sticks in that situation, running the route right at the sticks for his quarterback. That way the quarterback knows right where to put the ball. Uh, just uh, shameful there that they were not able to uh, get the first down on that play. Long field goal try. Just about 50 yards for Tarkington, but he can really sling it. Kick on the way, no good, he missed it short. And, and the that... curse of the commentator strikes <laughs> again. Oh, absolutely. This, uh, you know, this would have been a long field goal make, though. 55 is, is pretty lengthy, even for some of our star kickers here in the SFL. Uh, just not quite enough leg, probably left it about two or three yards short. A uh, good attempt there by uh, Shark Tarkington, though. I mean, if you're the Baltimore coaching staff, that's 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 a no-lose situation. You're already up 14. If you make it, great. If not, you know, that's not the best starting field position for London. They're throwing 38-yard line. Lee to the near side. That pass is complete to Carr. Carr will grab a first down after a 10-yard pickup on the near side. Took a combination of Giovanni Bolt and Kaz Fly to bring him down. And going back to your previous point, Michael, it absolutely, might as well just go for it and see if you can uh, nail the long field goal. So otherwise, you're going to try and attempt to pin him back deep. Uh, you know, best case scenario, they'll end up at the 20 maybe. They might be pinned back at the 2. Uh, not really a, a, a huge uh, slice of victory there for them. Hand off up the middle, and there is Rex Ripley having a good run for himself. Seven yards, he's slow to get up, though. Took a massive hit at the end of that run. Man, and I would be too. That, that was a huge hit coming uh, from the linebacker. I couldn't tell if that was Dazzo or not, but that, that was a big old hit and knocked him down on his back. It was actually Giovanni Bolt, the safety, who came up and made that tackle. Handoff. Ripley didn't get there. It's going to be third and two, only gained a yard. And we see the comparison again and really striking. That time, Joe Dazzo coming in, making the stop as we get a look at him right there. Eyeing into the backfield, ready to make a stop here on this third and short. The mustache is intimidating enough alone. Intimidates half the offensive line. Lee, plenty of time. Throws almost picked off. Kaz McFly jumped the route and knocked it away. And London comes up empty again. And again, we talked about these impressive corners. Kaz McFly, uh, last time I called a Baltimore game, uh, he was definitely impressive to watch and has been all season all right. long uh, with the pass deflection there, knocks it down, and uh, gives a, a chance to get his offense back the ball. 
Paul Hunter on the field again. Going to be putting from his own 45-yard line. Looking to pin Baltimore deep in their own zone. Kick is away. Bounces inside the 10, down to the 5, and it's going to, oh, barely roll into the end zone. Ooh, that one's tough there, Michael. You, you thought you were probably going to get him back. It bounced enough times. They probably could have gotten a chance to knock it down uh, inside the 5 or inside the 10, but uh, just not able to get to the ball before it rolls harmlessly into that old end zone. Now from the 20-yard line, handoff to Gaines is going to get nothing, maybe a yard on first down. Good gang tackling by the defense led by Schlin Shady. And for, let's take a look at some playoff picture. For Baltimore tonight, they've got seven wins. Even if they were to lose tonight, they still probably have a good chance of making it in, but they could as Dazzo drops back to pass, throws to the near side, and Shea Carroll, or rather, uh, Daily Holder is going to be three yards short of a first down. If they win tonight, it's probably certain that they're in the playoffs. And we talked about this a little bit off air, Michael, that, you know, winning they're in is pretty much where they're at. We don't have the official word from headquarters just yet. We're waiting on uh, all of the uh, scores and stats to come in before we get everything all calculated up, uh, especially going into the final week of SFL action next week. Be sure to stay tuned for that as we get into the play here. Handoff, Gaines, first down. Easy running, five yards, just under his average per carry on the day. Moves the chains again. We're under 6.45 to go first quarter. This is first half is flying, flown by. Oh, yes, sir, most definitely. Six and a half minutes to go. This has been a quick one compared to the one I had before. Not a lot of score and a lot of good defense being played. Dazzo in the gun, five wide on first and 10. He's gonna take a shot down the far sideline. It's cut and into Knight's territory. Flipping the field to the 38. Oh boy, was that a big play. Let's go ahead and take another look at this. What a rainbow throw, first of all, by Dazzo. Getting it past the corner and able to sneak it in just before Nathan Blake, the safety, comes over and makes the tackle on uh, Malone, knocking him out of bounds. Great play there, great throw. And Malone with a tightrope walk to stay in bounds after he caught the pass. He was right there by that solid white line. First down, here it is. T-Roy Gaines up the middle and get three yards before he's put to the ground by Davidson. And again, good, day, good gain on first down. You know, staying ahead of schedule, making sure that you get, you know, three, four yards each down. And uh, I know I talked about this London defense, but uh, they are uh, on their heels a little bit in the early goings of this ball game. Offset eye, single receiver right. Hand off Gaines again. He's running left side into the teeth of the defense. Slim Shady brought him down along with Nathan Blake. And he'll get six yards out of that third and three. And that's certainly been what Baltimore has been excelling at today is uh, doing those outside runs, not necessarily right up the middle where the defensive line can hurt you. Third and three, they're in the eye formation here. Only a single receiver slotted left. Handoff, Gaines. Gaines gets a block and he's got a first down. He took a big hit for it, but he does move the chains. And again, I, I was just talking about it here, Michael. A nice little power run over on the left-hand side there. Offensive lineman doing his job, getting into the second level, blocking the linebacker, and making sure that his back gets first down yardage. And there was some pushing and shoving going on during after, a little bit after the play there. And tempers may be a little bit strained already here as it's a pass to the near side. Garen Malone is going to get on the first down, up 12 yards inside the SFL, presented by APM Music Red Zone down to the 15. The other two times that Baltimore has been in the red zone tonight, they've come up with seven points. And seven points both on the uh, feet of T. Roy Gaines, he already with two rushing touchdowns, we'll have to see 
if uh, more rushing is in the cards here. Not on this play, though. Nope, it's another five wide set from the 15-yard line. Oh, Dad's left to step up the pocket. Hit as he throws, but it's complete. Put it on the board. Daly Holder touchdown. Baltimore goes up three scores. Man, oh man, and that is what you get from a veteran quarterback, right? Steps up in the pocket, knows he's going to be hit, throws it into double coverage, only where his receiver can grab it, and Daly Holder able to come down with it right in the middle of the end zone. Great play from this Baltimore offense, and man, they are rolling here in the first half. The kick attempt from Shark Tarkington upcoming. Now these are, these extra points are not uh, unmissable as this one goes up and through. Uh, in the game I called earlier today, Tulsa did have an extra point block. It didn't matter in the end as they won comfortably by 24. But it was an interesting little turn of events. Oh, it's always fun to see uh, special teams plays, whether it's returns for touchdowns. Or, or, you know, block kicks or punts. Uh, so it, it's definitely fun to watch, and uh, we'll see if we get something like that here tonight. Kick off all the way from Tarkington. And here is Validation from his own 15. Spin move gets him out close to the 30. They're marking at the 29. Let's take a look at our SFL out-of-town scoreboard presented by ScoreStream, the official live scoring app of the Simulation Football League. They're in the second quarter in Mexico City. The Aztecs lead the San Francisco Sharks 24 to 14. They've just kicked off in St. Louis and the Gladiators already have a seven nothing lead over the Chicago Wildcats and everything else from earlier today. I'll get to after this first down play for the Knights lead. Back to pass, he'll flip it out to the far side. And that's Ray King ball. I haven't called his name tonight. He is the halfback in the formation. And he gets a catch. Let's see. Take a look at the other scores from earlier today. Houston solidifies a playoff spot. They beat New Orleans 35-27. Tallahassee is no longer unbeaten as the Dallas Lobos have beat him by a field goal in a wild one, 34-31. Sioux Falls beats Denver 25-14. Lee out to the far side to Gotti Hands. That pass is complete for six yards. Tulsa beats Oklahoma City 41-24, and Eric, you called a wild one in Alaska as the Alaska Storm come all the way back, largest comeback in SFL history to beat the Las Vegas Fury 40-34, and that is the out-of-town scoreboard presented by ScoreStream. Download the ScoreStream app from the iPhone or Android app store to stay in touch with everything SFL. And let's see, pass goes out to the far side, and that's close. I think he might have gotten it at that last little glimpse there, Michael. In, in real time, it looked to me like he got the first down. And yes, London will pick up the first down. Good challenge by Gerald Smith. And the drive continues for the London Knights looking to get on the board here before halftime. And that might be a very important challenge there. Throwing the challenge flag on that uh, game, or excuse me, that drive extending uh, catch uh, there out of bounds. First and 10 from their own 41 yard line. Lee back to pass, has to step up in the pocket. Now throws a little bit, lead to the seam, catch is made, and there goes all the way inside Baltimore territory. First down for London. And this is their best drive of the game so far. James Hands makes his first catch of the game, and it's a big one. Well, in good protection there, making sure that their quarterback stands upright. Lee able to kind of stand up there, make sure that his receivers run the routes, and he finds one of the Hands boys right there in the middle of the field for a big gain into enemy territory. Offset eye behind Lee, short drop, fires over the middle, tips. Oh, it falls to the bear, batted around and hits the turf. About three vultures had a shot at it. Willis, Dazzo, and Volt were all in the area. And nobody could pick it off. 
Well, Dazzo, the first one to get his mitts on it. I'm surprised that Giovanni Bolt wasn't able to pull off the tip drill there as he already has 10 interceptions on the SFL season. Very impressive numbers as he leads the SFL in picks. Ellie. London wipes the sweat off their brow as they get another shot at this. Second down and 10 from the 33-yard line of Baltimore. In the silver, red, and yellow handoff. Ripley up the middle. That's his best run of the night. Nine yards straight up the gut. Took basically the entire Baltimore defense to bring him down. And that kind of says a lot right there. The fact that uh, T-Roy is already over 100 yards rushing today. Uh, about this, the state of affairs that this ball game is in. London's got to put up some points here before we go into the half. Well, they are well inside field goal range. Their kicker is Nate Odell. And off Ripley, diving forward first down. He dove right through the block of Courtney Kale and moved the chains. Baltimore, ha uh, sorry, uh, London has not had a play inside the red zone tonight. We've hit the two-minute warning as they are almost there. Baltimore with a comfortable 21-0 lead. London with the ball trying to change that. This is the SFL presented by APM Music on YouTube. Stay with us. London trying to close this gap before halftime. Down 21-0. Two receivers right, none to the left. Two in the backfield behind Lee. Lee short drop, looking over the middle. Oh. He underthrew the receivers, and I say vers because there were two of them. Donnie and James Hans were right there in the middle, and Joe Dazzo knocked it away. Yeah, there were definitely two in the area. I'm not sure if they uh, got the play mixed up there or what happened to where they were in the same general vicinity. Uh, but either way, that sidearm throw that Lee had uh, definitely didn't help matters any as the defenders were able to knock it down. Now second down and 10 for the 23. Minute 57 to go. Hand off on oh, the counter. They go nowhere. And so the Baltimore defense was all over it. Amon takes his second tackle for loss of the ball game. Drives him back to the 25-yard line. And Amon takes a very impressive rookie this SFL season. Able to come up with that stop there. He is come up with a ton of tackle for losses this season uh, and that one obviously very big in this ball game today Amon takes that was his 12th tackle for loss of the year over the middle almost intercepted Joe Dazzo batted the ball away from Carr who had daylight behind him but Dazzo said no and Ben don't break is uh, the, the method that this Baltimore defense is using here with a fourth and long coming up forcing a field goal try and uh, London definitely needs this in order to kind of stay within uh, reach of this ball game. The kicker, as I said, is Nate Odell. It's going to be just past a 40-yarder, making a 41-yarder. With a minute 23 to go, kick is on the way, and it's right down Main Street. And London has their first points of the night. It's 21-3. Right down the middle, like you said, Michael. Good kick there, especially from a guy uh, not signed to a full full contract here in London. So uh, definitely a good job, and uh, you know maybe we'll see him uh, next season in the SFL too. A minute twenty to go is not enough time for Baltimore to uh, extend their lead before the break. Oh, absolutely! With three timeouts. Uh, the way this offense has been clicking with both T-Roy uh, and through the passing game, uh, this Baltimore offense has been clicking. So uh, I, I fully intend them to uh, keep doing what they've been doing. Uh, I mean, they've they've won six games in a row at this point. I mean, they, they must be doing something right. McFly brings it back to the 30. And, well, they have the ability to score more points before halftime. And their other option is they're up. 21 to 3 have T-Roy run it about four times and go into the locker room and think it over let's see what they do first and 10 they will run it with Gaines and Gaines tries to find a way through but his own blockers were in the way and he gets back to the original lot of scrimmage and that's been the bread and butter for them in this running game is a uh, 
firing off those uh, power runs off towards the right-hand side, or excuse me, or the left-hand side. Um, but this particular one being towards the right, uh, defense ready for it on that play. Trips right, or trips left, rather, single right on second and 10. We'll see if Dazzo intends to throw. He does, but it's a little out route pattern to Gaines, and he only gets one yard. Great, impressive one-on-one -on -one tackling by Jimmy Rigg. And those plays are designed for the running back to make that man miss. And one-on-one -on -one, uh, situations like that, you got to make the corner miss, uh, especially being a bigger dude like T-Roy is. Now third and nine. A four-wide receiver set plus a tight end. Dazzo in trouble. Down he goes. It's not going to be a sack because he got the ball out of his hand. But William Davidson might as well have had one. And, you know, disappointing run uh, in the two-minute offense here for Baltimore, just not able to get anything going. And uh, clock being stopped with 13 seconds left, that uh, gives an opportunity for London to possibly get within scoring range. Yeah. Eric, you're a defensive player. How big of a boost is this? Is, uh, how big of a boost was that drive for you if you're on the London defense? Oh, as a defensive player, you want to see that. Like, you want to be on the sidelines watching your boys on offense go down the field. Uh, so we're constantly making sure that we're going out there, we're doing our job so we can get the ball back to our offense and score. Uh, name of the game is scoring more points, but, uh, you know, that's why we're out there to make sure that they don't. They've got five seconds, and it looks like they're just going to run it with Ripley and go into the halftime break. No 70-plus yard Hail Marys here, and Ripley will just... Uh, <laughs> London calls a timeout. All right, color me confused. I'm scratching my head a little bit myself. I'm not 100% sure uh, what the thought process is in this uh, last couple seconds here of the first half, but, you know, that's why I'm not a head coach in the SFL. <laughs> and I think Nathan Lee is also confused. He went over there and he's talking to his head coach, Gerald Smith, about it. And they are in Hail Mary formation. So a change of heart from the London coaching staff. Now they're going to go for the miracle play. Lee steps up in the pocket. He's going to fire it down the field, and it is tipped and incomplete. It wasn't even close to the end zone. And it was knocked away by Maryland, and that will do it. Triple zeros on the first half clock. It's the end of the first half. The Baltimore Vultures have a 21-3 lead. It's all up to the London offense to get back into this game. Can they do it? Find that after the break. This is the SFL presented by APM Music on YouTube. Stay with us. Welcome back to Queensway in the heart of London. And the hometown Knights are getting a late night thrashing currently from the Baltimore Vultures. It's 21 to 3 as we begin 
the second half. Good news for the Knights. They will start the second half with the football. And we're good. That first play was a six-yard run by Rex Ripley. Once again, apologize for the interference. Lee on second and four, out route to James Hands. That's complete first down. And that's the kind of play you need if you're London. And what kind of adjustments do they need to make offensively? What do you think that they talked about in the locker room to lead into the second half? Well, and, and I think they should go with uh, some more dink and dunk action. Um, you know, the, the slant routes seem to work for them real well. I think Nathan Lee's trying to do a little too much. And, and see, that's exactly what I'm talking about right there. Something that's just a quick out route. Get your feet in bounds. Get out. You know, work on the corners, on the sidelines, and just kind of spread them out. Donnie Hands, 13 yards and a first down into plus territory. Got the foot down. Avoided the tackle by Benjamin Paul, who is out there in coverage. And let's take a look at this replay to see if he controlled the catch. There was a similar replay in the game I called this afternoon between Tulsa and Oklahoma City. And we will see... And, and that's what I was thinking there, Michael. Uh, did not quite look like a completed pass, and then a fumble. Uh, certainly looked like he just kind of batted the ball away. The ruling overturned. The Knights still get another chance on offense here. Third down and 10. Lee, two receivers to his left. Eye formation behind him. He's going to throw to the far side. That pass is complete. James Hands. Gets up near the first down marker. He stepped out of bounds, I'm guessing three yards before it. Got to get the guy in the stat truck to get our, our flasher off the screen there. But that was a good uh, good little pass there. Got a couple yards. And uh, you know, we got third down coming up here for London. Uh, we'll see if they can convert. And this is third down and about four yards is contrary to what I said on the last play. Lee under center, same formation as the previous play. Baltimore shores pressure, but only rushes three over the middle. First down for London at the opposing 30. Christian Carr took a hit, but hung on to the football. And London, this might be their most efficient drive of the night. And it's like I was saying uh, earlier when we were coming back from break. Dink and dunk passes, little things here and there, you know, three, four, five yards, and then hit them with a good 12, 10 to 12 yard out. Keep the drive going. Lee again, floats it over the middle. James Hands inside the red zone and down to the 15 yard line. And again, great play. <laughs> just a great, I know we keep tripping over each other here. We're just getting too excited watching this game. But again, a, a nice route into the middle of the field, quick route, quick throw, and that moves the chains. James Hans was pretty much invisible in the first half, only made one catch. He's got two on this drive, both of them moved the chains. Inside the SFL presented by APM Music Red Zone, now at the 15. Just under eight and a half minutes to go here, third quarter. Lee looking, throwing, a strike, almost picked off. The referee took a tumble on the far side of the field and Kendrick Thornberry almost had his fifth pick of the year that certainly wasn't a pretty pass there <laughs> certainly don't want to force things especially in the red zone when you have a chance to get yourself on the scoreboard three points is great but uh, I mean you definitely want to get yourself in the end zone especially at home in front of these tired uh, fans second and ten Lee looking, pressure, now he'll throw it short to Ripley, he's got some room to run, he's wrapped up and dropped, shoved out of bounds at the 8-yard line, a third down and a manageable 3 coming up. And Ripley needs to be used in this fashion, again, just a couple yards here and there, keep them ahead of schedule, give them a third and manageable here, and uh, you know, they might use them here on third down, especially with this 2-back set. 
do you go for the first and goal, or do you go for the end zone here? I'd go for the end zone. Again, run a quick slant route over the middle, throw it right in the middle of the field. Lee out route to the goal line. He's not going to get in the end zone, but he is going to get the first down. James Hands grabbed that one, and he hung on as he got hit from behind by McFly. And honestly, and he, he, he probably would have had the touchdown there, Michael, if he had stayed in the end zone. He had to come out to get that ball, though, which is why it's first and goal. First down and goal at the one. This is prime. Rex Ripley territory gets the ball, shoves it to the end zone, put it on the board. Rex Ripley has his first career touchdown in the SFL. And he's giving the ball mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation, making sure that it still lives because he just dragged this thing into the end zone. Great play there, just sidestepping the, the one defender, really, that had any sort of shot at him. And uh, London making this a ball game here. Rex Ripley joined this team a week short of the deadline. His first game was week seven. He had yet to score before just now. And the life of the London Knights in this game is still there. They're still alive. Now down 21 to 10 as the extra point goes up and good from Odell. And that's a statement, Eric, from the Knights. They came out of halftime, put together a five-plus minute drive, and scored a touchdown. They said, hey, we're not going away. We're still in this ball game. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and again, you know, I, I've been saying this numerous times, and I'm, I'm sure that people are tired of hearing it, but, I mean, th this is what they needed to do. This is the game plan they need is to just stay ahead of schedule, make sure you get two, three-yard plays, uh, and keep the drive going. And uh, that's what they did that last drive, and it got them seven points. Taz McFly gets out to the 29-yard line. As we saw multiple times earlier today, this game is not over until the clock hits triple zeros, and sometimes beyond that. Oh, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> obviously, with uh, this past game that we had with the Storm, uh, making uh, the SFL's largest comeback, 24 points. Uh, it's not over till it's over. Baltimore on offense looking to respond now. Here's Gazzo out to Gaines, one-on-one. -on -one matchup on the outside. He's going to push past one tackle. He can't get away from Malinish, and he'll pick up six yards. And on the opposite side here, uh, T-Roy is a very large part of this Baltimore offense. Uh, as we mentioned, swinging the ball out to him, giving him the ball out of the backfield on a handoff. Uh, he could get you that five, six-yard chunk every down. High formation, second down and four handoff gains up the middle. And the defensive line says, you are not getting through here. And a fantastic individual play by Slyn Shady, a linebacker aggressively coming up and making the hit. And Slyn Shady is one of the most formidable linebackers in the SFL. We actually have two of them today, Oman Takes and Slyn Shady, both big-time linebackers and young guys in the SFL. And off again to Gaines. He's not going to get there. He was cut down two yards short. And who is it? It's Slim Shady again, back-to-back -back tackles and forcing the punt. And I watched him that whole play there, Michael. He was reading the back the whole entire time, hit that hole as soon as it opened up, and that is why you get your fourth down here. Punt is upcoming from Pablo Gates. The Knights are right back into this ball game. If they score here, it's only a four-point game. As Malinishin brings it back to the 33, let's have another look at the SFL out of town scoreboard presented by ScoreStream. It's halftime in St. Louis as the Gladiators are tied with Chicago Wildcats 7 7. That's a must win game for Chicago if they want to make the playoffs. Mexico City is running away with it at home against San Francisco. It's 38 7, just started the third quarter. And that is your out of town scoreboard presented by ScoreStream, the official live scoring app of the Simulation Football League. Nathan Lee out to Ripley, and Ripley did not get back to the line of scrimmage. Actually, that's Ray King Ball. Did not get back to the line of scrimmage, lost a yard. Well, and the defense came in like a raking ball and absolutely destroyed him behind the line of scrimmage there. Loss of a yard is certainly not what you're wanting on first down. Got to make up for it here on the second and 11. 
Handoff, Ripley up the middle, hit and dropped after a gain of three by Dazzo. Joe Dazzo has really brought his experience to bear all season in that linebacking court. Oh, absolutely, and especially at a middle linebacker spot, that is where you want your most seasoned veteran on the defense. He is the quarterback of the defense there at middle linebacker. Lee in a passing situation on third and eight. Hit as he throws, flips it up, and it's again almost picked up. It was bobbled a couple of times. Giovanni Bolt almost had another interception. And again, I'm very surprised. This is the second one tonight that we've seen that Bolt can just come away with an easy pick. Dazzo actually doing a great job here, sticking with Carr the entire way and getting his big mitt up there. Look at that. That's impressive right there. He rushes the quarterback, and he covers the receivers over the middle. Joe Dazzo does it all in his sixth season in the Simulation Football League. And Kaz McFly is going to go out to try and receive the punt from Paul Hunter as the London drive comes up empty. Kick on the way. Hunted from just... Forward of the 20, received at the 30. McFly makes a move and gets to the 35. And that is where Baltimore will begin their next drive. Well, and a little bit of a disappointing drive there from London. I'm sure they were wanting to get some points on the board. Still plenty of time, though. And uh, if they get another stop here, get the ball back, uh, like you said, it's only going to take one score to really get them back in this one. 4.42 to go, third quarter. Baltimore in their red, white, and black as a big 28 points if they sink the extra points. And an incredible play here, watching Garrett Malone just go down the sideline. And this is what we were talking about here. These star wide receivers going against these you know, these corners that don't necessarily have the same star power, and Garrett Malone just flies on past Rig. Baltimore now up 27 28, pending the extra point to 10. And just as the London Knights were thinking about getting back into this game with an impressive drive to open the third quarter, Baltimore puts the hurt on them with that drive. Kick is good, and it's 28 to 10 with four minutes left in the third. This is the SFL presented by APM Music on YouTube. Stay with us. Shark Tarkington has missed a field goal tonight. It was from 55 yards. Other than that, he's been perfect. I don't think we'll hold that one against him. Yeah. I don't know if anybody in the SFL is making that, or maybe the kicker they've got over there in Mexico City who seems to make anything, doesn't matter where he is. As Malinishin gets up to the 26. That's where London will try and again pick themselves up and get back into this ball game. Yeah, and that, that big touchdown there, uh, the Garrett Malone uh, touchdown catch, that certainly doesn't help London's chances any. Uh, but they still got plenty of time here. They can certainly put up some points. They're not in... A, a perfect situation or a great situation like they were last time where a field goal or touchdown would do. Uh, they got to get in the end zone here and they got to do it in a hurry. Lee, plenty of time to throw, but he's just going to chuck it out to Ray King Ball who loses two yards. Great tackle by Hendrix Thornberry who was covering him all the way. And they're going backwards, London. Yeah, and, and honestly, that was that was probably a coverage play right there. Uh, Baltimore probably uh, had good coverage down the field. Uh, Lee going through his progressions, taking a lot of time, eventually checked it down for a loss. Hand off up the middle, Ripley nowhere to go. Dazzo again in the gap, makes the solo tackle. He came into this game with 50 tackles on the year, and I'd be surprised if he doesn't get nine or ten more tonight oh and that's his uh his recipe there is making sure he gets a ton of tackles each game and baltimore's stacking the box here lee 
No pressure, but he's just gonna go underneath to Ripley, who shakes a tackle and gets four yards. Impressive for a fullback, but still nowhere near the first down marker. They had to get to the 36-yard line, and again, another drive goes three and out for London. And the makings of a good play uh, there by Ripley, just not quite enough in order to get past the marker. Uh, honestly, I, I didn't really like that play call there. Uh, I would go for something a little bit closer to the sticks, but, uh, you know, Ripley did what he could in that situation. Yeah, they all got close and almost blocked the punted Baltimore. They fly out to the 36. And Mike Dazzo and company back on the field. And this game is going in favor of Baltimore. And as this uh, game winds to a close, the attention may shift to next week's season finale and I'll finish my thought after this play as they have first and 10 from the 36 going right to left across your radio dial as T-Roy Gaines gets six yards a huge matchup with Carolina next week in Baltimore at Vultures Field and that could be for the second automatic qualifier spot in the Eastern Conference so a huge game next week most definitely, but they obviously have something to focus on here as they've traveled across the pond to play this this good London Knights team. And off up the middle, Gaines close to a first down, didn't quite get there. And it'll be third down and inches. Some words exchanged after the play by Gaines and Slyn Shady. Those two have had a personal matchup all night, and it's mostly been T. Roy Gaines who's been winning it. Now on third and inches, here is Gaines running right side, looking for an opening. He doesn't find one, but he doesn't matter. He just stiff arms McDonald and gets a first down. Oh my goodness, Michael. That was just absolutely insane. That vicious stiff arm there. It didn't look like he had the speed to get to the corner, but it just didn't matter. Like you said, throws McDonald into the dirt and gets himself that first down. Trips left single right on first and 10 from their own 48-yard line. Gazzo short drop, quick out to the near side. That pass is complete. And stepping out of bounds after 11-yard gain. Daly has another Baltimore first down into plus territory at the London 39. On a great play there by Holder. That's his job as the slot receiver. Uh, just kind of going across the, the defense there and getting what he can. And uh, he got a good chunk of yards there. That'll certainly help Baltimore as they extend the drive. And they are really picking on Jimmy Rigg tonight. Whoever he's matched up against, they seem to throw that way a lot of the time. And it's been working for Baltimore. They have a first and 10 at the London 39 as they're just going to flare it out to Gaines. Has some running room. Knocks over a man and gets six yards on first. And it's McDonald again. How many times has T-Roy Gaines knocked McDonald to the ground tonight. Uh, man, and these, these corners are just getting picked on in general. Uh, I, I just, it's unbelievable to see the amount of times that uh, Rig has been burned, McDonald's been thrown in the dirt. Uh, hopefully they can pick this up because uh, this has been uh, pretty crazy here from this Baltimore offense. Second and four, 10 seconds to go in the third quarter. Dazzo to the far side, tipped and incomplete actually complete daily holder somehow made that catch oh my goodness after the tip it did not get the first down it'll be third and one after the quarter break this is the end of the third quarter put your fours up the knights still have a chance it's 28 to 10 baltimore as we go to the final 11 minutes this is the sfl presented by apn music on youtube stay with us We have flipped the field and now a third and one here. For Baltimore, they're going to give it to Gaines following his blockers first down easily to the 27-yard line. And I wish we had had a replay of, of that catch by Holder on the previous play. 
Because I don't I, know how I, he caught the ball. I, 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 I don't understand how he reeled it in, honestly. Uh, it looked like one of those strange uh, just laying on your back. Oh, look, there's the ball. Okay. I might have to go back and find that one in the uh, the replay later this week. Hand off gains up the middle and push forward for two yards. Brought down by Hard. It was a good run there by T. Roy. Not not a ton of yardage there, but uh, enough to kind of get themselves some breathing room. Uh, moving deeper into London territory, uh, London needs a stop here. They're already in field goal range at the 25. Dazzo handoff gains nowhere to run. Knocked down by Slim Shady. As this time it's Shady winning the matchup. And just as I mentioned it, they needed a stop. Slim Shady, he's he's coming to calling. Now third and eight. Dazzo in the gun. And they've gone to this five receiver set a lot tonight. Let's see if it works out for him here. Dazzo fires down the middle. Caught in double coverage at the four yard line. Shea Carroll. Climbs the ladder and brings it down. Man, an absolutely incredible there as he goes. He, he's in double coverage, but he somehow runs his route just shy of where the defenders were going. I'm not sure what was going on in that play, but great play there by Holder to reel it in for first and goal. A great play by Shea and a handoff to Gaines, and he's into the end zone. Contact. Put it on the board, a hat-trick of touchdowns tonight for T-Roy Gaines. Ooh, boy, and he knows it, too. I love that celebration, though, man. That, that, that's some good stuff, T-Roy. Let's get a look at the replay, though. Just following his blockers, goes right through the one defender that had any shot at him. And that was what we were talking about all game today, is that he has that ability to either be the strong bulldozing back or the shifty runner. And you get both out of this guy, and that's why he's such a threat. Rick Hard, who made a tackle on a previous play on this drive, had a chance to stop him at around the three. And he just, just ran right through an arm tackle and see Roy Gaines. Extends the vulture lead. We've got 9.05 to go in the ball game at a 34 to 10 lead now for Baltimore. 35 to 10 lead for Baltimore. I can't do math. It's fine. Well, that's why we're broadcasters. <laughs> <laughs> things looking more and more bleak, though, for London, Michael. They've, they've got to get things going. Uh, only 9.05 left to go. they got to get things going quickly. Basically, a touchdown on every drive is necessary. Oh, boy. A block springs Melitishin, and there he goes. Jeff Melitishin, return, touchdown, 15-10-5. Put it on the board, and that'll get the crowd roaring here at 3 a.m. in London. Oh, baby, is that what they needed right there? Just as I'm calling for a spark from this team, Malinishin with the big return. Looks like he's getting bottled up. Got one more blocker on the right-hand side there. And then that was just about it as Tarkington had no chance at Malinishin. Great kick return. And that was the spark that the Knights needed to keep themselves in this ballgame. Back up tight end, Graham Chapman with the big block on the outside that sprung Malinishin all the way down. And London now didn't even need to get their offense on the field to score this time. As the extra point is up and good for Miguel. Now 35-17, just like that. And the onus is once again on the London def defense to get a stop. Absolutely, Michael. They got to get the Baltimore offense off the field, something they have struggled to do today, uh, especially putting up all those points. Uh, so we will see if this London defense, especially that defensive line, can create some pressure there on old Dazzo. McFly from the five. 
And up to the 25 and down to the 28 is where they'll spot him after the return. And the name of the game for Baltimore right now is Waste Some Time. Oh, yeah. Just give it a T-Roy, run it up the middle, run it sideways, run it backwards, whatever you want to do. As long as that clock keeps running, you don't step out of bounds. 8.48 to go. Vultures in their red helmets, white jerseys, black pants, black numbers. Today, they're going left to right in this fourth quarter. As Dazzo stands up. That was a good job by Jimmy Rigg, making sure that he got T-Roy out of bounds. Minimal gain. Actually, no gain on that play. So it's a third down and a very pivotal third down for this London Knights squad. We'll see if they can get a stop here. Again, they go five receivers, three right, two left. Alone in the backfield is jo uh, uh, Mike Dazzo. Mike Dazzo throws deep down the left side. It's stacked away. Jamie McDonald knocks the ball down. He's been much maligned tonight after being bowled over by T. Roy Gaines about four times. At that time, he came up big and knocked the ball away from Shea Carroll. I almost didn't recognize the guy. He's actually standing upright. I'm used to seeing him on his back. But, hey, that's a great play there. A great uh, play by the corner to stay in stride with the wide receiver, getting your arm up, making sure that it disrupts the play. Great job, and uh, the offense is going to get the ball back. Unless you see another return for a touchdown here, Michael. Uh, you never know. Pablo Gates to punt it away from his own 15-yard line. Jeff Belinishin back to return. And he's got blockers, Belinishin, but he can't get away from number 63, Kevin Barnett. He'll be driven down at his own 41-yard line. But even so, good field position for the Knights. Eight minutes, 16 seconds to go in the ball game. Good field position indeed, and, and this is what they were kind of looking for here. Uh, make sure that you got uh, a short field in front of you, or a shorter field in front of you. And, uh, you know, now they can't really take their time. They kind of need to get themselves in the end zone and do it quickly. Lee, short drop over the middle, floats it in. First down and more past the 50, out to the Baltimore 47. One play into plus territory. Downey hands, brings it in for a first down. That was an impressive catch. I didn't even I didn't even think he caught it, honestly, but a uh, very impressive catch there by Hands, making sure that he gets the ball and gets past the marker for the first down. Two left, single right. Lee under center. First and 10 for the 47 handoff. Ripley, Ripley's got some running room. He's going to be shouldered down after a gain of seven. Tony Willis had to come up from the safety spot to make the tackle. And we'll we've seen again flashes out of Rex I'm sorry, Ripley. go ahead, Michael. <laughs> we've seen flashes out of Rex Ripley tonight, but nothing that'll set the world on fire. No, no, certainly not. But, you know, you said it before. He is a fullback. He has done his job as a fullback. Uh, they probably just need to adjust the offensive game plan to include him more in the offense. And the curse of the commentator strikes again as he loses four yards on that play. Taken down by Courtney Kale. That was probably not what you were looking for there. <laughs> uh, no. And now it's a forced passing situation for Nathan Lee on third and six. Still out of field goal range here. Need to get up past the 37. And he's going to throw to the sticks. Dottie hands. Oh, they didn't get it. Fourth and inches. And it's James uh, Hands who did not get the first down. I don't know about that one, Michael. I think he might have gotten the ball across the line there. Might be worth a challenge, especially at this late game, although I think they spent both their challenges, haven't they? They have used both their challenges. They've been successful. And this is – I don't think this is a time where you can try and force them to jump off sides. I think you need to run this play. Absolutely, and they do. Inches, they run it. Here's the fullback. He didn't get there. Turnover on downs. Baltimore's defense hangs in there. Amon takes third tackle, uh, second tackle for loss, third of the game, and Baltimore takes it away. 
Very impressive job by this Baltimore defense, staying home, recognizing the situation, knowing that that was Rex Ripley territory there, getting into the backfield. And the young linebacker, uh, we're going to be seeing much, much more of this guy as SFL history goes along. And uh, th this will be a big name in years to come, I'm sure. And now London, maybe they're thinking they're a little bit hard done, but on, on inches play with a fullback in the backfield, you should be uh, converting those. Oh, absolutely. That's that's why you have a fullback like that in order to convert those type of plays. Uh, you know, and it, honestly, to have a, a sort of T Roy S kind of player, someone that can come out of the backfield, someone that can bulldoze their way through the line of scrimmage, and we just haven't seen a ton of that from Ripley. Dazzo pumps and gets sacked. Oh no, he got the ball away. Caught for a seven yard gain. <laughs> what? Man, was that impressive. He had, <laughs> uh, there was like three times, I think, Michael, that he was uh, about to go down and he somehow got away with it and got a few yards. Uh, uh, inside of his 20, taken down at the 19. It's going to be a long field for London to work with. And now, Nathan Lee, it's time for him to show up because he has been a little bit in the cracks all day. And this is his time to try and lead the London Knights back in this ball game with just over five minutes to go. Lee under center of the receiver each side. Hand off. Ill and Ripley got blocked up in the backfield. Loss of three. The offensive line went out to lunch that time. And Nathan Lee is going to have to go long down the field. Tipped that in. Hands. Defended well out there. 1v1. Man, in that first play, you saw that coming a mile away. They were stacking the box. They were ready for a run. And sure enough, run right up the middle, right along right along the outside of the, out, the uh, offensive lineman there. Excuse me as they were able to drag him down for a loss. And then that long, I think that long pass was honestly just a little force there. Kasmic fly knocked it away, third and 13. High formation and Lee over the middle. First, oh no, it's incomplete. I thought James Hands got it, but it was knocked away at the last second. That's what and we've been seeing a ton of from this Baltimore defense. You think that they have a play made, and just at the last second they come in, make it happen, and London has to go for it here. Fourth and 13. They're inside their own 20. If this Hale in the coffin is Lee in the shotgun, looking, throwing, incomplete. Guess who? Guess who? Joe Dazzo again knocks the ball away and you can you can basically say good night London. And the uh, the London crowd not very happy uh, with that effort there as uh, you can hear the boo birds uh, start to come out a little bit. Uh, but you know like we said you kind of had to go for it in that situation. Uh, good effort there I think by Nathan Lee to try and get his team past the sticks and extend the drive. And uh, we should see a heavy dose of T-Roy to kind of round this thing out. First down and 10, hand off to Gaines. And we'll pick up three yards in the clock. We'll roll down under four and a half minutes. Yeah, and again, just keep handing the ball off to T-Roy there. Make sure that the clock is rolling. Don't snap it before, at the very least, five seconds. Uh, but I would run the play clock all the way down. Second and seven. Probably going to be 15 or more seconds before they snap this ball. The formation is run all the way. They're going to run it with games and he'll power forward for a couple of more yards to the 10. Let's take you one more time through the out of town scoreboard presented by ScoreStream. In the fourth quarter, Mexico City has a comfortable lead on San Francisco 44 to 30 is happening in St. Louis. It's Freeman Pelletier night at Budweiser Stadium. It is his final game before his retirement. 
and they are up on the playoff hunting Chicago Wildcats 14 to 10 in the fourth quarter, and that would be a huge deal if Chicago lost that game. Hand off T-Roy Gaines, first down inside the five, down to the three. The clock will run into three minutes. That'd be a huge deal. Uh, going back to the uh, the SFL scoreboard, that'd be a huge deal if Chicago had lost that game. Uh, but a good run here by T-Roy, making sure that he gets past the sticks. A uh, good blocking up front by his offensive line. That's been the story pretty much all night long, and that is why you see the scoreboard like it is. Just under three minutes to go as the clock ticks down. Baltimore trying to punch it in the end zone and put an exclamation point on a complete team performance here tonight. Hand off those two games that he dives toward the goal line and didn't get there. Tackled from behind by Milinishin and it's second down and goal from the two. Honestly, not the worst thing in the world. Uh, keeps the clock rolling. Uh, we might see one more play. We will see one more play before the two-minute warning here. Uh, but uh, like I said, it keeps the clock rolling, keeps London from getting the ball back. Game clock and play clock. One second difference, so they will have to snap it one more time. And we will see if T-Boy Gaines can get into the end zone. Oh, he can't with an exclamation point. The play is broken up by Oliver Rendier. And that takes us to the two-minute warning. Baltimore, they're going to put the exclamation point on their performance tonight up 35-7. to seven. This is the SFL on YouTube presented by APM Music. Michael Trillo and Eric Vincent in the booth tonight from London. And it's been a fun one to call. A lot of points, a lot of great moments. As on third and goal, Dazzo looks to go through the air. He's going to find T-Roy Gaines. Can he turn the corner? No, he cannot. Driven out of bounds by Rick Hard. London calls a timeout. And actually, Michael, I think they actually substituted the backups in there. That was backup quarterback Adam Jefferson throwing the football. And uh, it was good that they got them to burn their timeout, timeout I guess, but... Uh, I'm not 100% sure what you're doing throwing the football in that situation. <laughs> and now a 20-yard ship shot coming up from Tarkington. And the hold is good. The kick is up and right down Main Street. And with a minute 52 to go, Baltimore has put the lid on this one. It's 38 to 17. Now, what do you do as the London offense down an impossible number with, you know, just over two minutes to go? Uh, you basically view it as an opportunity to practice. Uh, you go down there, you run your offense just the same as you normally would and uh, try and get what you can out of it. Uh, you know, this is this is more than uh, just, you know, simply, okay, well, uh, tonight wasn't our night and that's it, we give up. You know, you go out there, you do what you got to do, and, you know, make sure that you run the offense the way that it's supposed to be run and start getting repetitions. Start getting uh, a feel for, you know, what success looks like and what uh, it's supposed to be like um, when you run the play correctly. They do have one more game, London. It's here in against the Indianapolis Red Devils next week as a pass down the middle of the field. James Hands running free against the defense. 15-10-5. London put it on the board. You have another touchdown. And that's what I'm talking about there, Michael. All it takes is just one big play there, and that gets the crowd back into it. Uh, all these lovely people staying out here so late. Uh, but a great play and just gets rid of the one tackler that had a shot at him and burns uh, turns on the afterburners, gets in the end zone. Great play there by Hans. And it is against the second team secondary for Baltimore, but still uh, padding the stats a little bit. 
boosting the score up into the 20s for London. Minute 39 to go. Here comes Nate Odell. And the kick is good. And it is 38 to 24, London. Still trails Baltimore, and they will go for the onsides kick here. Driven into the ground and easily picked up by Baltimore. And that will be that. They can just kneel it from here. And Baltimore will get out of London with a 38-24 victory. What a bad onside kick attempt. Good pop on the kick there. Uh, just not quite in the right direction. Uh, I don't think they uh, had a good opportunity to, to recover it, but uh, good execution on the kick itself. And with, I think there have been more onside kicks recovered this season than any other season we've had in the SFL. It's been I would agree with that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> With the Sharks being like 80% success rate. <laughs> yes. I, on, I actually called one of kicks. their games when they did that as well. And it, it was insane to watch an impressive right. comeback uh, in uh, Rob Roby's uh, first game as an SFL quarterback. A run. I think the team Roy Gaines is back on the field. And yeah, the number one offense is back in Gaines. Gets nothing, London burns their final timeout. And I did it a little bit. Let's take a little look forward to next week, Baltimore at home versus Carolina. And as things stand, as a no going nowhere is gains. As things stand, Baltimore has at eight and three. Carolina, this was their bye week. They are at seven and three. If the Vultures win, they lock an automatic qualifier spot. If they lose, they could still get one if other results go their way. So, a, a, Eric, a major, major matchup next week in Baltimore. Oh, absolutely. And, and plenty of matchups and, and plenty of uh, storylines to watch for uh, as we enter the final season of SFL regular season play. And uh, even, obviously, even today, uh, obviously some of these teams that were counted out of playoff contention putting on shows and showing, you know, hey, don't count us out. You know, we'll be here. We won't be here uh, in the playoffs necessarily, but we'll be here next season. Watch out for us. Yeah, you talking about uh, Dallas knocking Tallahassee from the ranks of the unbeaten? Oh, yes, probably, sir. Probably the biggest result of today. London is back on offense. James Hands makes the catch. And a wild turn of events in St. Louis is... Over the middle, hands under the catch, first down. Clock is going to run out here as Chicago has just scored a touchdown with under a minute to go to take the lead over St. Louis. Only in the SFL, Michael. It's been a crazy day of SFL action. Be sure to join us tomorrow, 7 Central, 8 Eastern. The week is not over yet. I thought it was Carolina's bye week. I was mistaken. Carolina is at home against the Queen City Corsairs who right now at seven and three hold one of the wild card spots and if they win they would jump to an automatic qualifier spot and jump Carolina. So the East is so close. And over the middle Donnie Hands grabs another one and that'll only ten seconds to go. Well spike the ball with two seconds and he gives us a little bit more chance 
to talk about uh, talk about the SFL in general mm-hmm. as we come down to the last week of the regular season. Be sure to tune into the SFL podcast this week. They'll have all the updated playoff scenarios. They'll break down every matchup. And Jack Brown and the boys do a great job every week putting that out. At your number one resource for all things SFL. And a very entertaining game as Nathan Lee stands back, cocks and fires to the end zone. Intercepted in the back of the end zone and that will end the game.